Mr. Chairman, thank you both for your appearance. Uh, Secretary Wormuth, uh, when you were here for your confirmation hearing, you agreed with me that the Army University Press should not remove the term Union Army from its publications. Have you had a chance to address that issue yet? Senator Cotton, I apologize. I have not had the chance to address that yet, uh, given that I've been here three weeks. But, but I, as I said to you in my hearing, I will look into that and talk to the folks at Army University Thank Press. Thank you. I, I understand it's been a short time, and uh, you've got a lot of other pressing issues. Uh, but as I said then, as I'll say again, if it's good enough for U.S. Grant, I think it's good enough for our troopers today. Um, for both Secretary Wormuth and General McConville, I want to speak to you about the nearly decade-long effort to replace the Army physical fitness test with the Army combat fitness test to test our soldiers on physical fitness that is a bit more applicable to the task on the battlefield, also to make it uh, gender neutral. There are reports of further combat fitness test redesigns and changing standards associated with the test that have made for a somewhat confusing story and heated debate. Uh, can you clarify for us the obstacles that are currently facing the combat fitness test, whether it will remain gender neutral and how the Army is seeking to implement the test now? Certainly, Senator, and again, I would ask General McConville <clears throat> to build on my answer, but first of all, it's very important that we have our soldiers be physically fit for a demanding environment on the future battlefield, and we're trying. one of the reasons that the Army has pursued the ACFT is to try to raise our overall fitness level while reducing injuries. So that was you know, the impetus. We are continuing to look at how to, um, you know, how to finalize the design for the ACFT. We are continuing to have gender neutral standards. Uh, we are looking, we have made some changes, as you know, you know, moving from the leg tuck to making the plank an option. Uh, but we are waiting for the results of a study from RAND that has been, uh, you know, required by Congress. And we're not going to make any final decisions about the test until we have the results of that and we can understand uh, how the test is going to uh, both improve our fitness, but also potentially what it might do in terms of our ability to recruit specialized skills like cyber and doctors and things of that nature. But why don't I let the chief General. build? I, I think um, you know, the science behind the Army Combat Fitness Test is, is really about reducing injuries. Um, as we've taken a look at the Army Physical Fitness Test over the, in fact, I was there when it was implemented, I hate to say, it was 40 years ago. Uh, and it's time to transform that test to take advantage of uh, the, the capabilities we have today. As we take a look at it, uh, as the Secretary said, we are examining the impact uh, on the force. I took it last week uh, for record. I think it's a good test. And what we want to do is, is move forward in implementation based on uh, the study. And I think it's going to have a, a more fit force, which is something that we need uh, as we move in the future. You want to share your score for the record? Uh, 478 <laughs> for the record. That's good. I'm sure all your Joes around the world are going to try to beat that now. That's um, right. Uh, General D are you committed as well to maintaining gender neutrality on the test? I am. Um, is there any consideration um, to um, pegging scores towards branch or MOS? Well, I think, I think the future, at least if, if I could make a recommendation in the future, is as we move to more of a talent management model in the Army, um, you know, if you're Airborne Ranger, which is a, a fitness type organization, you're in the 101st Airborne Division, you're in the 82nd, well, you know, I would say from talent management, you want people with a certain level of fitness. If you're doing something else that, you know, you're a neurosurgeon, you might be more concerned with that person can operate at a level six level than, you know, lead the, you know, battalion and PT. So I think what we want to get to is, at least I do, is move away from an industrial age personnel management system to a 21st century talent management system where we, we recruit people, we select people, and we quite frankly promote people based on the knowledge, skills, behaviors that they have within their specialized area. But we still want a certain level of fitness in the Army. Yeah, I think it, the Army needs to consider that. You know, loading, uh, loading around into a tank gun or a howitzer um, has to be done whether you're a man or a woman. That's uh, right. It requires a certain level of physical fitness, but that's a different level of physical fitness than it takes to be a flight surgeon or to be a cybersecurity specialist.